All right, T-Rex82 here. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I've been able to do an actual video. I uh, had a lot of things going on in life with uh, the coronavirus and my daughter and everything else compiling into one big giant mess out there. But I have been recently taking a little break from Empyrean. Uh, I have found myself over here at Dual Universe with a few wonderful people. Uh, we've got Dragon PC, we have Excalibur, we've got Battlestone, we have Sig, Futon Torpedo, just to name a few. Um, but I have been getting sucked in, sucked in very well. And I will say, originally, this game was very frustrating. Uh, it was a situation where coming from Empyrean, I was able to build things, and starting here was a whole other whole other beast uh, with the voxels versus building with blocks. Now, there are some similarities, um, and there are some things that really become frustrating. However, once you start to get the hang of it, and once you start learning some techniques, things start to fall into place. Just recently, there was an expo uh, over at the Zenith Corporation where I did have a ship on showcase there, and that ship has recently gone through a myriad of changes and upgrades and all sorts of fun stuff. So I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to kind of show you what I've been doing with that. That will be hopefully in the upcoming expo as well. Uh, that will be in January, the Alioth Expo. Um, but before I go any further, if you guys like what you see, hit that subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know what you think. And of course, if you're part of the XBC already in the Anvil, feel free to send us a message if you're already playing or if you want to play and, and come on over and give us give us a hand because uh, there's a lot of stuff to be doing but without further ado here is the upgraded zealous now this originally was white at the last expo i have since gone ahead and uh, changed it all over to gold here um, i have extended it a little bit further out i have gone ahead and widened it just slightly the reason for that is i wanted to be able to fit in a warp drive which you can see right there in the side window so that has been fit in i have upgraded the storage capacity uh, i have gone ahead and added another large atmospheric engine on the back as well as i believe i added one or two more of the medium space as well so this thing this thing hauls uh this thing goes pretty quick for a small core uh, i will burn up an atmosphere before i hit the top speed uh, which is great. So I've got weaponry on here. I have two of the medium, I'm sorry, the two of the small cannons, one on each side. And I also have an extra small uh, rail gun in the front here. Now that rail gun is attached to the pilot seat. The two medium, I'm sorry, the two, I got to stop doing that. The two small cannons are attached to the gunner seat, which you can kind of see floating right above the cockpit there, uh, the red seat there. And we'll go inside in a moment. So yeah, so this thing has undergone a lot of changes on the exterior as well as the interior. And I took a lot of the inspiration I gained at the last expo to really put into practice here. Uh, there was a lot of great ships over there that were, were taking these, these areas and just giving them a bit more detail by uh, adding in windows with... Uh, cabling behind it and things like that that kind of really build in the depth the last variant of this which is uh just the zealous which is a baseline one um didn't have that it was something i was still trying to work out and i think i finally finally nailed, nailed it so let's go ahead and go inside here immediately as you walk in you have your storage your cargo area in the back here uh you've got these three boxes down at the bottom for your Natron, Kurgan, and Warp Cells. We have a couple extra for miscellaneous items. Uh, there is an extra small ammo box. Now, I may have to upgrade that and get that up at least one more size. I haven't quite decided as of yet. But there is the Warp Drive front and center ready to go. And your container hub right there in the middle. Now, that is attached to, I believe, eight small containers. Uh, up from the six that I had in the last variant. So this thing right now as it sits, if I load it up with hematite, uh, it can fly close to 550 tons. Uh, for a small core, that's not too bad. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you see at the uh, starting area with the uh, ships for sale, those only go, I believe, up to 200 tons. So this outperforms those 
in every aspect. Uh, so we've gone ahead with the gold on the inside as well and started really playing with the microvoxels and, and getting that nice little trim of the illuminescent lights there on the bottom. We do have lights up above as well, which are attached to uh, this switch here. So you can turn those on and off. I do have them set to turn on based on a delay because that just gives it a little bit more of a nice feel. I like to open the door and then have the lights come on, uh, but they will do so. Uh, we've got a little bit of scaffolding up in the top to give it a little bit more of that industrial feel. And my whole goal with this was I wanted to be able to tie in almost a luxury industrial. I wanted this to still feel like a workhorse, but also have that nice cushy feature to it. So we've got cabling inside here behind some glass panels and things like that that I think really bring it together. Up top we have a medium uh, space radar up there and that is attached to the gunner seat up front so let's go ahead and move on to here so we've got cabling in the floor uh, these are the steel panels I put those in because I, I thought they looked like grates uh, so I kind of ran with that uh, we've got a medium screen over here which is attached to that wonderful wonderful warp drive um, warp cell calculating uh, Lua code uh, that I have thrown on that and that is attached to this programming board here. This seat is attached to the only atmospheric radar I have, which is a small atmospheric radar. Reason for that is if I have somebody else going along with me, I can go ahead and have them come in and we can kind of look for derelict ships, things that people have left behind and, and kind of strip them apart and throw them in the cargo hold and bring back the things that we need. And same thing here, we do have lights up above on both sides. These are also attached to a delay for when you open this door. Um, I have moved the switch, I will move it back, but that is this switch right here. Let me just go ahead and turn that off. That'll close the door and you'll see the lights go down. And I also have eight in the front here. Those are also attached to a secondary delay. So they will come on one second after these top lights come on. So if you pretend we just entered in and I turn this light on, or to open that door, we're entering in, lights come on, screens come on, and those bottom lights will turn on just like that. Uh, so yeah, that going forward, I did grab this awesome uh, Lua code up here, which shows uh, systems, any damage systems, it tells my velocity, uh, pitch roll, things like that. It also shows cargo capacity as well there, so it does tell me, uh, based on a factor that I put in, how much of my cargo capacity am I willing to uh, kind of chance so I can go over 100% I haven't done it yet I don't plan on doing it because uh, repair costs and things like that so on this other side I do also have a secondary fuel management as well um, I do want to try to update the Lua code so on this screen I take off the fuel management over here and just have this one but put something else in place over here what would be nice if I can figure out how to and again I'm not good with Lua um, but maybe have a the brake calculator or something like that. I do know that there are some Lua codes out there for the HUDs that do have that. And I'm wondering if there's a way that I can, well, I know there's a way. I just don't know how to actually do it myself, but get that Lua code in that space. So that shows my actual braking distance. That would be absolutely wonderful for when I am out in space, because right now I'm kind of testing it and playing it by ear as I go ahead and do it. So, yes, so up there we have an emergency controller. We do have the atmospheric uh, small radar up there as well. We have a space radar over here. And again, the space radars are both, the small one is attached to the pilot seat. And then we have the medium one back there also attached to the gunner seat and that radar attached to the scavenging seat. And we've gone, again, gone ahead with the steel panels again, kind of give them a little bit of a grading feel. I did go with a tan color in here. I'm thinking this is luxury. Ooh, I got to fix that voxel down there. Um, so I kind of wanted that tan interior to go with the gold exterior to really show I got money. <laughs> uh, no, but it, I think it works pretty well. Uh, we've got cabling up there and some windows with a little bit of backlighting up there. Uh, we also have all of the atmospheric fuel tanks, which are one, two, and three up above there. And those can be accessed with a flick of a switch here, and they will open. Oh, well, they're supposed to. Oops. I think I took that link off. I'll have to re-put that. But those were linked to that, so they will open all your fuel doors and go ahead and fill your tanks from there. So to kind of give you an idea of the performance, I'll go ahead and jump in the seat here and uh, take a quick gander 
We'll go out into space and come back real quick. This is what she looks like from the outside. I think, oh, hold on. Time out. I gotta close that outside door. That's the one thing I, I need to do is figure out how to, just in case I just do this again, I can turn off that uh, silly, silly uh, force field, which is right there. So let's go ahead and shut that and try that again. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. And we'll head right towards the sun. Why not? And I also have it set up so the gear automatically comes up and goes down based on your altitude. So that's also set. I wanted to make this as automated as possible without going into some fancy, fancy Lua code. So it should fit for anybody who goes ahead and uses this. Let's bring up the HUD again. There you go. See, I'm already up to 700 kilometers an hour and still climbing. Now this can go straight up, and this will punch right out of the atmosphere and have zero issues. All right, and now the space engines are kicking on. Top speed on this is 1,100 kilometers an hour before you start running into problems, and you will burn up fairly quickly but as you can see we're already beyond that point and i can keep just accelerating and we're just going to go ahead and slow down though so i can just go on back brakes i believe are about double my acceleration g so i like that for the sense that when i'm coming into atmosphere i can go full burn on this and basically increase my trajectory along a more stable line uh, as I'm coming down into the atmosphere so I'm not coming straight down which you can do in this which is not a problem and I'm going to be doing that right now just because I wholly just turned around and then and went with that but if I turn on just to kind of show you we'll go ahead and turn on my trajectory right now it's coming straight down so if I just angle out full throttle you're going to see that trajectory start to come up I'm holding the brake still slowing down still slowing down but I can kind of feather it off the brake to bring it into the atmosphere. Uh, the one problem I do have with this is fuel economy. It's not the best. It could be a little bit better, um, but it still, it does the trick. If you fly it right, if you fly in the upper atmosphere, uh, you'll have hours, hours of fuel, and it's not something that you will have to worry about too much. Um, but if you're flying in the lower atmosphere, that's where you're going to run into some issues. Go ahead and get that off and go back into the cockpits. Actually, let me show you the turning radius. I might as well. So let's keep that on. We'll go up to our burn here. And as you can see, this, once I pitch this thing, I have a very, very tight turning radius on this ship with no issues. Very little drift whatsoever. This thing will turn on an absolute dime. All right, let's go ahead and head back, and I will show you what other things have been worked on by other players in the organization, namely Sig and Battlestone and Dragon, and and we'll take a look here. Jeremy as well. Jeremy has been over here. Now, Jeremy likes to joke. He likes to say, well, I'm not a builder. I just basically copy-paste things off of your ship and put them on mine. But you know what? He does it in his own style. And actually, he got quite a bit of attention from uh, Landmark Explorer, who was over here yesterday kind of looking at a lot of our ships and our base and kind of oogling over some of that which is absolutely wonderful it's nice for the anvil uh to get a little uh, recognition there now as you see in front of us we have the factory which is over on the left hand side uh, and we have the tower over on the right everything that you see over there has been built solely by our wonderful and great Battlestone. Now he has been working tirelessly and hard, and I think he's taking a little break uh, from Dual Universe just to kind of get back into it a little bit later, but he's been working so hard on this stuff, and it's it's a job within itself. You can see the factory up there. All of those are large containers. Uh, we'll kind of go up there and take a brief look, but I believe the interior in here is not complete yet. As you can see, the tower is coming together 
but it is looking absolutely wonderful. Now we have the XBC over here, uh, which is lit up. So at night it does it does look very nice. Uh, we also have what Sig has worked on. Sig has been doing the. Uh, he's got the anvil over here, which he has done a very good job. Now I don't know how hard you guys might think it is, but it is extremely hard to get this shape, this smooth, which he has managed to do. And I am wholly impressed. I'll tell you right now, I cannot do that. That is not something that is within my realm of possibilities at the moment, but he has been working extremely hard on, on uh, increasing his voxel mancy so he's able to pull off some crazy shapes. But again, I mean, look at this lighting. The Battlestone did a great job in here. It just cast some wonderful shadows. And in here we do have... Uh, the Voxel Library, which Jeremy has gone out and he's been grabbing from other players and we've been bringing it back here to make it just a little bit easier for any of you players who decide to come back in and uh, give this a shot. Uh, you're not starting from square one. We do have a lot of blocks in here that are similar to what you would find in Empyrean and other games or Space Engineers, uh, which Sig has been working hard to reproduce. So they are there. Among other that other things, there are other blocks which... You will not find in any of those games. And that is one of the great things about Dual Universe is you can, if you can think it, it can be done. Um, it does take a lot to get it there. But if you have the patience and determination, you can certainly do it. Like this is uh, something I was just playing around with the other day. Um, started out as square blocks and angles. And then I used the smooth tool to really start to work on that. So I did get this nice smooth cowling on here. I don't know what I'll use it for, but it's here just in case I decide to do it. Same thing over here. Um, but people put in a lot of time and a lot of effort to get these shapes to look the way they do. And I'm very thankful for that. Uh, and the great thing is they're giving them away for free, which is absolutely wonderful. I, I wholly, I find this to be an awesome community of people uh, within this game altogether. And everything that you see in this game is 100% player made. And you just don't get that from other games, um, at least at this level. So yeah, I'm, I'm fully addicted right now to this at the moment. And it's, it's an absolute blast to play. Um, we go out every other weekend or so. Uh, we do mining trips. We head out to other planets. Uh, we'll bring, usually I have another hauler over there. Um, not here on this planet. It's on another planet at the moment. Uh, but it does 2.5 kilotons, and which is about to be eclipsed and surpassed by Battlestone's new creation over here, the Beefcake. And the Beefcake is absolutely, it's a monster of a ship. And this thing looks phenomenal. In order to pull off a lot of these shapes, like, I don't know how he did it, but they look great. Uh, they look absolutely great with, uh, with all these sort of support beams and things like that. So this is his Beefcake. And I'm not going to go inside a, a lot of these ships, but I mean, you can see he's got his toolbox over here that he was using to build the ship and kind of piece things together. And that's the one thing that you have to do in this game is you have to think of it a little bit differently. You're not necessarily building block by block, but you're building almost like plates and sections. And then you can take those sections and paste them onto your creation. Um, over here, we have SIGs ship that he's been working on. It's not fully done, so I'm not going to go inside because I don't want to ruin it if he decides to make a video or or maybe i'll cover it later once it's finished but yeah he's got this over here and much like empyrean where you can dock other ships to other ships he's got his little hover ship up there um attached to a platform and you can see he's got his voxelmancy toolkit over here that he uses to get some shapes and things like that and that's looking stellar as well you've got uh, a lot of ships over here from Futon. You've got this, or not Futon, I'm sorry. This is Battlestone's little hauler that he's got here with a little cylinder on the back. I absolutely love that. A lot of these little, little, uh, techy little ships over here are going to be for Dragon PC, and these are quick, very quick. These are to shuttle back and forth to the market. Uh, just things that you might be able to carry on you and sell them or pick something up real quick. And here we have a territory scanner, which Sig has attached to a small core. Uh, I think he's still working on it. I think it's not quite 100% of flight ready. It does fly, um, but I think he might need to add a little bit more vectoring thrust on this in order to get to fly even better. But it looks absolutely stunning, and a lot of people don't realize what it is until they actually get up close. Now, this is Dragon PC's medium core over here. Um, 
I think it's something that's still a work in progress. I believe he calls it the Locust. I'm not sure what else he's planning on doing with it, but we'll keep covering that as we go along, and we'll we'll stay in the loop here. Now, I did I did play a little joke on Dragon the other day, and I feel so bad. But you know what? It was fun. So I happened to be flying over to District, I believe, 9, and I look down, I see this green ship. I'm like, wait a minute. That kind of looks like something that I would do. And I go closer, and I'm like, oh my god, it's Dragon PC's ship. And I walk over, I still had building rights on the ship. So, to play a little joke, I pulled all of his atmospheric brakes off. Now, I still have them, Dragon, so they are in my ship right now currently, so I will give those back to you if and when you want them. Uh, but yes, any repair costs, let me know. But I do know that he had been airborne without his brakes, and I think he noticed about six minutes before he was getting to his destination, and he had to do a lot of... Uh, circling so i'm sorry i'm sorry dragon it was just too tempting i had to do it uh we got a lot of other great ships over here this is also one of Battlestones as well this is his small core hauler again looks entirely different than everything else you would see on this platform and it, it looks phenomenal to me uh, i love it i love it it's utilitarian and it looks great this giant beast of a thing is something that um jeremy was doing uh, or Safira, he was basically taking the front end, not off of the ship that I have over there, but off of my medium hauler, which is on another planet, like I said, and he would copy paste certain areas of it and, and make it look even better, but he made, so here's the base of the anvil that we were looking at before over there, but he made it look like an intake uh, to these engines. So he calls this, I believe it's got a Hemi is what he calls it. Uh, so a lot of these look like little Hemi engines that he's, uh, put on the back and and listen copy paste block by block however you want to do it it is your creation you've come up with it and i think it looks it looks great so yeah same thing he did over here so that one is a uh, an amalgamation of what i had over on this one before i changed it up so much um but yeah this is his little small hauler that he's got over here uh landing pad so we've gone ahead and built the runway which is not quite right it's not 100 percent finished it should be probably a little bit wider um and we can't go any longer unfortunately unless i claim a territory Ooh, which i could do the next territory out so we may have to do that um but yeah i've got i personally i built the the landing pad and this area here which is not done i do want to do an elevated area up in the center there and kind of give them an actual platform for these ships to sit on i'm just looking out there i see a ship just hitting in the water slowly moving but yeah in a nutshell there's a little bit of dual universe for you guys to check out and you can see those up there are the cores uh that battlestone has placed to expand this place a little bit further down on the strip you can see that tiny little platform over there that is where my shop is going to be for the anvil uh works where we will be selling ships out of currently i have sold a couple variants of of this ship um but this is the luxury version. Oh, there's one other thing inside I did not show, but again, I'm not sure who I got it from, but inside here, behind this glass, you have all of your delay lines and relays and things like that. So everything in here is attached and works to something, but it is something that you can display. So I did go ahead and do that. But yeah, so there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming along on this journey with me for a little bit of dual universe. Again, if you guys want to come in and join us under the Anvil, head on over to the Discord, join the Anvil, and then come on over here. Uh, there is generally always somebody playing and things to do. And of course, we would be happy to help you along uh, on the journey of actually coming into this Voxelmancy stuff and figuring it out. So until next time, keep your heads above the hard deck. I will catch you later.